This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron, the Twitter here in the Pittsburgh, PA at the Sorgatron Media Studios. And I'm still here a week later with Joe Dabrowski. He hasn't left yet. We're still wearing the same clothes. It's been a long week. Well, this couch is so damn comfortable. That is true. I didn't want to get up at any point. Um, I've just, I've had to go the whole week living off of one package of Arby's curly fries, and I just think he could have done a little better with catering. Uh, that's true. That's true. I've, I've learned from the best indies. Um, but, uh, <laughs> There was a sandwich plate the other day. I was impressed in the in not not the place I expected it. Where would a sandwich plate be that you didn't expect it? Not, that, not at that indie show. Oh, at the indie. Yeah. I thought you meant they put it in like a weird location. No, like, no, no, like no, 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 no. They hit it in a ceiling tile or something. Well, it is the one where it's like it's like a folding like a card table, and then there's like hey, there's like bottles of water and snacks and stuff. I'm just like just there in the middle of everything. Man, you like, guys had bottles of water? That sounds high class. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm really excited when we have bottles of water. That's why those meatful was always nice. But anyways. I got a mug. Enough of that. Hey, go check out everything wrestling mayhem show.com, indie wrestling.us, 412-206-WMS0, good times at wrestling mayhem show.com. Contact us if there's anybody you think we should be talking with or subjects we should be talking about on the show or whatever the case may be. Joe, let's get right into it because... We we've been talking for a while, and I, I have. Is Jimmy still here? I still did he like, leave? He's he's gone. Hold okay. on, nope, nope. The he's gone. The muscles have left. It's just us. <laughs> so we got to take a rain check on the muscles. Side. Yes, yes. We got enough of that last week. Um, you're just coming off a really interesting trip. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> As of a recording here, you're just a few days removed from. Um, I I, I was uh, happened to be uh maybe ironically or whatever as chance would have it uh it was at, poetic it was serendipitous it, maybe it was poetic i was at a i was doing i was not at wrestling that night i was doing a live stream of music at a video game conference on twitch and what do i do to make sure my twitch connection is going so i can verify the connection later i pull up twitch and what do i watch on twitch wrestling and AAA happened to be happening on Saturday night. And I'm watching it for a little bit, watching the crazy stuff. It's loud. I don't have the volume up. And then I get a message. Hey, I think Joe Dabrowski is on Triple Mania. And I turn my iPad up, and there you are. There you are. And I'm like, what the hell is Joe doing in Mexico? He should be in Cleveland at his own show. I was asking myself that question the entire time. No, yeah. they, it, was, uh, it was a whirlwind of a week. Um. I know, and I got to give a shout out to Kevin Kleinrock and Master Public, because mm-hmm. uh, I know Kevin had been talking to people down there about me and, and, and recommending me to Conan and things of that nature. Um, but it wasn't official until the Tuesday beforehand. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did not get booked the tu- until the Tuesday beforehand. I didn't get my flight information until the Thursday. I flew out Friday morning. Um, incredibly thankful of the opportunity. But, man, that was uh, such a breakneck pace as far as just prep and getting notes, getting ready, talking to whoever I could. Mm-hmm. Um, a number of people were very helpful from from LuchaCentral.com, and I reached out to, to my old buddy DJZ and that sort of thing um, to really immerse myself in the AAA product as much as I could. But, yeah, what a way to come in. Biggest event of the year for AAA. Triple Mania 27. You're like Jim Ross at WrestleMania 9 without the toga. That is that that's a very fitting analogy. Yeah. Um paired with Matt Stryker, mm-hmm. um English announced team and uh, I had heard you know and I heard I'd heard and I'd seen some clips regarding the prior year's English announced team and uh the good and the not so smooth that came out of that and some of the technical snafus. So um I was just ready to give it my all and kick ass, but uh, to do that all on, on four days notice, which wow, I mean, biggest opportunity in my career, I, I have to say, based on the scope of AAA, the size of that crowd, the yeah. reach of that audience, that's the most feedback I've gotten of any show I've ever done. Um, so not only am I preparing for that show, but I'm preparing the people that are going to fill in for me to run my show in Cleveland mm-hmm. for premiere. Um, 
And plus, you were already booked on this show, so obviously you were preparing for that. Well, uh, yeah, that was the uh, extensive meditation I was doing, as mm-hmm. well as the, the jiu-jitsu mm-hmm. lessons. Right. Um, but yeah, it, it was just uh, just a breakneck week for me. And my whole thing, whenever something like that comes up, my whole thing is always loose lip sync ships. I don't talk about it in advance. Mm-hmm. I didn't tell anybody before I debuted for Ring of Honor, except for those who needed to know. Um, I didn't tell anybody that I was doing the TNA house show down at Ross Traver and except who needed to know. Uh, I didn't tell anybody about this except for who needed to know. Um, because if I tell everybody and make a big to do about it, then what happens if the flight gets canceled? Then what happens yeah. if, you know, there's some sort of technical issue? What, there's a lot of, of, of ifs that go into traveling that, that far and live television or live broadcasting, I should say. Um, so to, to see it's okay. the... It's, it's twitch.tv, so it counts. Yeah, oh, fair enough. Um, so for the inundation of feedback to come in, um, the first... I, I got a text from Jay Williams and Farnsworth like 20 minutes before we went live after like the pre... The, the, the Spanish announced team had like leaked like a pre-show cell phone video and he just met, are you calling Triple Mania? I didn't respond to my messages till after the show. I'm like, is it too late to say yes now? <laughs> like, the, 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 like the tweets came in of people like amazed and surprised that I was there or, or speaking um, kindly yeah. about myself and Matt together. And yeah. thankfully, me and Matt had worked together before, if you remember. Mm-hmm. We had done... Uh, yeah, he flipped me off that night. I remember that. Okay, yeah. cool. So yeah. you guys have a relationship too. Oh, we do. Uh, better than mine with him, apparently. <laughs> Good. Um, he had done a few matches for IWC. Yeah. Um, and I had kind of helped facilitate getting him in there because I wanted to sit under the striker learning tree. And we'd also done Border City Wrestling together for Scott Demore when it was Border City versus New Japan, East meets West. Mm-hmm. And that was really our chance to, to feel each other out and get into a little bit of a groove together. So I was, I was very thankful and fortunate that I had a chance to work with Matt in, in an event like that. And Matt couldn't have been more helpful for me. Um, working with me with the show, um, you know, uh, endorsing me, validating me to the audience that really didn't know me yet, uh, helping keep me at ease before the show went on the air. Mm -hmm. Uh, Matt's a pro at this. He's the only man to have ever called a triple mania, a WrestleMania and a Wrestle Kingdom. Wow. Um, So Matt was an old pro at this. He knew what he was doing. And um, just very thankful for the opportunity. It's been it's been surreal ever since knowing I was able to to slip into that role and just feel the energy and the crowd and just the set and the pyro. It's, you mm-hmm. know, not to dis- discredit any independent company, but it, it's a long cry from, you know, being in a, 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 a you know, a, a closet sized building with 20 people, you know, <laughs> um, You've it worked. was it was truly a big league experience, and I'm I'm very fortunate for it. It's um, it, it, and you mentioned I you know you mentioned the the, the exact things I was going to compare that to uh, uh Wrestle Kingdom WrestleMania. This is their WrestleMania Wrestle Kingdom yeah. of of Mexico, basically. Um, it was you know for those not not familiar, uh, AAA does regularly stream their events on Twitch, so uh, Americans we get to watch them. Uh, uh, very easily, actually. Yeah, there's an English language yeah. feed you can sign up for, you can subscribe for. If you subscribe, you can watch the event for free. Even to this day, you can check that out. Yeah, so you can go check that out if you missed that. And and, and I was getting the messages too, which is like, is Joe on Triple Mania? I'm like, wait, what do you mean Joe's on Triple Mania? Uh, as I'm doing my job at the time in my production. And uh, and uh, I, again, turned it up and somebody was just like, I, like I'm like, this guy sounds familiar. You know, for, like friends of the show. And, and I turned it up and, and listened for a while. I'm like, that's Joe. I know who that is because uh, they've heard you here or other productions that we've done uh, or, and put out there over the years too. So, so how, what scale was like, how, how big was that arena? How, you know, how many people were there? You know, obviously far cry from the, the Indies here in Pittsburgh. I mean, you've worked ball field shows with ring of honor, bigger shows like that. Lucha shows, um, I mean that it's just massive in comparison, right? Yeah, I, I didn't get an actual count to know if it was a sellout or not, but I know mm-hmm. that there were uh, uh, upwards of uh, almost, if not in excess, of twenty thousand people there. Um, if you go to my social media, I, I posted a, a little fifteen-second kind of panoramic deal of yeah. me uh, going around the building, and you can see like 
if I shot that building and someone had told you that we had just finished a raw taping, yeah, uh, you'd yeah, buy it. Yeah, uh, it, it, you know, it, it's and there were people all the way up and down. You know, every every section, every side mm-hmm. uh, that the set wasn't on, and then behind me, you had the giant screens and the the big AAA lettering. Um, it, it felt like a big league production, and it uh, absolutely was. According to the Wikipedia, they're calling it at about eighteen thousand. Okay, that's that's amazing. That's a huge arena. Oh yeah, the biggest crowd I've ever uh, worked a show in front of, without mm-hmm. a doubt. Definitely. So, so what is uh, one? Have you been to Mexico before? I have never been to Mexico. So, no. so not only that, and you have, and you're not, it, it, you're not a stranger to world traveling. You, as we, we have heard on commentary, uh, you used to go to England. That is a true rumor. But this is my first <laughs> time going to a country where English was not the predominant wow, language. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So that was that was a little difficult to navigate. Thankfully. Um, a lot of the staff there were bilingual. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I spent a lot of time with Vampiro. Um, you did a, a Lucha Expo and some other stuff with? Yeah, yeah. We did mm-hmm. Expo Lucha last year. We're going to be doing Expo Lucha together in two nice. weeks in San Diego. Um, August 16th and 17th, I think, if that's a Saturday and a Sunday. Sounds um, right. I don't know if that's going to be available live or not, but LuchaCentral.com would have all that news. Um, and Vamp's been great to me. Vamp had some great advice before I went out. Um, I was I was expecting the worst because you always expect the worst. You know, mm-hmm. you always prepare for the worst. But mm-hmm. everybody was very accommodating. We've heard some really rough stories about wrestlers in Mexico. So. Yeah, but most most of them are told by DJ Z, and he always gets himself in trouble. That's true. Um, but yeah, it's another animal. And and mm-hmm. and even Vamp and Stryker were telling me stories where you know if you wind up in the wrong place, you're not supposed to be. If you get off the bus at the wrong stop, mm-hmm. eh, you may never mm-hmm. get seen again. So. I was cognizant of all of that, and, and and I didn't get a chance to do a lot of touristy things or sightseeing. It, it was it was the wrestling stereotype. It was airport to venue to hotel to venue to hotel to airport. To right, home. right. Yeah. So uh, from that, uh, that that's that's awesome. And uh, uh, so 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 the the how um, working on framing the next one. So I, you know, here we're used to, you know, obviously we see New Japan's kind of English, com- uh, um, English uh, presentation. Uh, if we get New Japan World or Access or something, um, or we're familiar with the Spanish announce table and the row, <laughs> the row of commentators we get to see on pay per views these days at WWE. Is it is it like kind of treated as a secondary thing, or because it's such a, a different kind of market? Like like were you guys like kind of the, uh, you know, how, how is how is that kind of framed? down there uh, uh, for the secondary commentary? Um, I mean, I, I I think you can draw comparisons to how Spanish announced teams would be treated up here. Right. Uh, the on-cameras were all the Spanish announced team, mm-hmm. which, by the way, one of their Spanish announcers is one of the famous ex-WWF Spanish announcers, Hugo mm-hmm. Savinovich, uh, who for years would have his table crashed through <laughs> on pay-per-views with Carlos Cabrera. Did you get your table crashed through then? I did not. Uh, we were we were up you were on up the stage. There. Yeah, we you were, were not at ringside, thankfully. Yeah. Um, but the on cameras are on Hugo, and I think his partner's name is Jose. Uh-huh. Um, and um, I'm sure there was more, you know, uh, attention <laughs> being paid onto them than, than us. Stryker had told me that in the past, sometimes the director that would be in his ear would be Spanish the entire time. Speaking wow. Spanish. Uh, we we had. We had English in our ear this time, so mm-hmm. I, I think AAA was taking a consorted effort to um, make the, the the commentary, the production, the whole presentation as seamless and as smooth as it possibly could be. Because they they've gotten criticism for that in the mm-hmm. past, certainly, mm-hmm. um, but it seemed like there was an effort, and some of the, the the stories that I had either you know read on the internet or maybe been able to pick up through through happenstance or hearsay really weren't there. AAA really had their act together. They really um, presented a top-notch product. They really mm-hmm. brought forth, I think, a quality performance on all levels. And if you're not familiar, you know, if you can't tell by some of the names we've already mentioned with Dean Vampiro and uh, uh, Matt Stryker, uh, AAA did have kind of a relationship with uh, Lucha Underground for the longest time when they were running that TV. So you do see some familiar faces or masks uh, across those. Uh, so, I, I, you know, it, it kind of makes sense. AAA is the biggest, mm-hmm. I believe, in Mexico. Like they are basically, w, you know, Mexico's WWE 
and yeah. and uh, I so mean, I, you could consider them the, the second largest promotion in North America. Yeah, like absolutely, it. absolutely. Um, so it makes sense for that kind of reach out because they they already kind of have a foothold between that and your Impact Wrestling's and AEW, I guess, and seeing a lot of those faces up here. Uh, and so. that, that's only going to grow too, not just through talent yeah. oh, sharing, absolutely. but just uh, again, the world's getting smaller and smaller, and and people want variety and alternatives. And AAA is in the best position to present themselves as that alternative product to bring that lucha libre style. It's, and it's probably easier for me to go to a AAA show than it is a New Japan show right now. <laughs> I think it's pretty in fair. general. Yeah, I think it's pretty fair. I mean, on location, obviously, New Japan's coming to America a little bit. Well, it's AAA, but yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, they're doing like were they doing I feel like they were doing like some kind of joint shows like Ring of Honor New Japan was doing if I'm not mistaken if not than that I know the talent comes through a lot of the uh indie promotions a lot well yeah as and well. You, you can look at guys like Pentagon Penta El Cerro Miedo yes. and Ray Phoenix as guys who in my opinion are doing for Lucha Libre what their Le Misterios and Psicosis and Juventud Guerrera did in the 1990s because mm-hmm. you're exposing that lucha style and lucha culture to a different audience that wouldn't normally, maybe they'd see it here and there, but they wouldn't be immersed in it. They wouldn't right, be as emotionally right. invested in it. Uh, Rey Mysterio turns so many young kids on to, to mass wrestlers and lucha libre and just the mm-hmm. history and the, the, the lineage that goes along with that Penta and Phoenix, you know, arguably other than the elite, I mean, you know, maybe the hottest wrestlers in the world today. Mm. And that puts more eyes on on Lucha and certainly more eyes on AAA. Again, way more accessible than it was when they tried to do that in the 90s. I mean, you had to go find tapes back then, right? Absolutely. Now it's literally go to Twitch TV and it's there. And yeah. and Conan was a big reason that, that Rey Mysterio was discovered in Psychosis and why they were brought up here. And now Conan's an important part of AAA present day as they continue to branch out. Absolutely. So you I can saw, see that constantly. I saw him sitting on when I was flipping in between uh, uh, sets that I was working, uh, it was uh, I was like, oh hey, there's Conan in this battle royal, drinking, yeah. drinking a beer on the surprise. Corner? I mean, Matt um, Matt hypothesized that it was a, a pure leaf sweet tea, but oh okay. I mean, it could have been something else. I don't know, but yeah, Conan was a a, a surprise entrant in that that Rumble style battle royal. Vampiro was another surprise entrant, mm-hmm. and uh, Vampiro and Conan have, uh, years of bad blood and beef between yep. them. So yep. that you got to believe that's coming to a head, but there were a lot of surprises. The original LA park made a return on that event. Nice. Um, uh, uh, a Yoko Hamada, uh, uh, came down on that event to, to replace, a, a, a women's wrestler that had been injured. So, um, it was expect anything that night and you just had to roll with the punches. I love it. I love it. Go check, definitely go seek that out. Listen to Joe's commentary on there and Matt Stryker and everything. I mean, I think, it, it, you know, if you've been excited about like the, the Lucha stuff uh, up here with Lucha Underground or what you've seen on, on any of the programs, uh, even down to Lucha House Party, you, sh- you should do yourself a favor and hit up AAA. Um, Joe, that's not the only thing that you're working on. I understand you had a uh, good conversation with somebody you name dropped here just a short bit ago with DJZ as well. My good friend, Michael Monte Carlo of Orlando, Florida, better known to you as DJZ or Joaquin Wild. Mar- Michael Monte Carlo? You don't know about that? It sounds familiar. I can't remember the backstory on that one. Guess you gotta buy the oh. release. No, um I'll 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 blow that one. Michael Monte Carlo. See Shima Zion um was sick of the name Shima Zion because it was very difficult for dumb people to spell. I misspelled it several times on this show. You just outed yourself as dumb. I wasn't gonna say you, There's but like other three eyes in there is ridiculous. There were some eyes, but whatever. Kurt Angle had three eyes. Um, Not in his name. No, that'd be weird. He didn't but have any eyes in his name. He was. That's why he exhausted them all in his catchphrase. Hey, remember, there's no I in team. But there's no U either. So DJ Z was um, sick of the name Shima Zion. Right. And he wanted to reinvent himself. Right. And nobody would let him reinvent himself <laughs> because the name Shima Zion is so, uh, 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 you know, related to him. Mm-hmm. Um, for better or for worse. Yeah, you don't want to start from scratch. You want to yeah. plug the name Shima Zion, who's been to Japan, Mexico, and you know IWC and all this Philippi- other stuff. Philippines done. and yeah, like a country, Russia. Well, yeah, I mean Russia? later years, yeah, but like yeah, this oh, is back yeah. in two thousand eight. Uh, context, context. I was figuring out where we're at. Yeah, we're in two thousand. All right, let, me, think, let me go back in the time machine. Yeah, so I mean, okay. he, young Shima Zion is a. 22 year old lad looking to make a name for himself and he wants to change his name and 
wouldn't you know the only person dumb enough for him to actually talk into letting him change his name was the guy with a heart of gold that wanted to help his friend and also wanted to convince him to come on to his TV show. Mm-hmm. Um, that'd, be, so, that'd be the one we just talked about last episode if you guys are following along. Yeah, that'd be PWO slash Prime TV available on ProWrestlingLibrary.com. There you go. And Plug. he had a game, a hot manager named Don Decadence that he helped name, by the way. Um, gave him some promo time to introduce himself. And okay, let's see. Let's see what we have here. Let's see what Michael Monte Carlo is. Sell me. And because I, I think at one point he even said, like, I won't come do your show unless you let me do use this name. Like, <laughs> fine. <laughs> it lasted one match. No way. And eventually he realized, oh, it's a stupid idea because A, the name sucks and B, it's not really me. So, um, so that's just one of many hidden Easter eggs in the entire uh, history of Michael Paris, DJZ, Joaquin Wild. And I flew to Chicago and 48 hours before he moved to Orlando to become an NXT superstar. We spent three and a half hours putting his entire career and life on uh, recording. I thought you were going to say celluloid. I, I, I almost said film, but that wouldn't be accurate. Yeah. Um, but we, we, we put it to, uh, to camera. And we told the story of who he was and who he is and who he's going to be. And and to me, his story is so interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, the son of a mail order bride. His father purchased his mother. That's a real thing that happened. Um, hearing about his love of wrestling and the one moment as a kid that scared him off of wrestling and made him refuse to watch it for two or three years. Um, the not politically correct reason that got him back into wrestling as a, as a fan um, to some of the bizarre things about his career that a lot of people don't know. A lot of people don't know that he at age 16 designed the very first ring of honor logo. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, stories of him traveling, stories of him getting hurt, stories of him in TNA, stories of him being profiled by National Geographic Television, um, stories of all of the weird names he's had as a wrestler and a DJ and a um, would-be male stripper. He bought a heart one time on a reality show. He did. I didn't yeah, ask him. Yeah, we had him on shortly after that one. Um. I, I do remember that now, but we, we covered as many bases as we could. The good and the bad of TNA, the good and the bad of the independence, mm-hmm. international trips, horror stories, having to find a way back home on no money. Um, and we talk about what's to come and how his family feels, how his friends feel, how he feels. Is he going to miss this world he's leaving behind of independent wrestling to become an exclusive talent? And I was, I was really a big fan of, of of our conversation it was at times deathly serious it was at times uh quirky and lighthearted. it was at times deep and it was at times um just very direct mm-hmm. um it, 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 we really crossed over every emotion that you could and that's going to be out in probably about a couple weeks now you'll be able to tell more than me you'll be the one making the menu um, <laughs> no we're pressure. finishing our no project pressure. this week and nope. then we've got another one. Yeah. Uh, but giving, whenever Sorg decides to get off his ass and do it, you can purchase it on IndieWrestling.us and ProWrestlingLibrary.com and Joe-Nabrowski.com if you like DVDs, no, stuff, which I do. No pressure. But, uh, no pressure. No, there's no pressure. Because you know what? If you fall behind, you just delay the release. But I'm, okay, I, I, we'll, put, well, I, I'll we juggle live? this between between Waffles with Women and Refs, Refs with Rigatoni, and we'll get this going. Where? When are you going to start fried chicken with commentators? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Me, man. Farnsworth, man. We can invite Lamada because we're out of good commentators. I was going to put Farnsworth. you in the in the pancakes with promoters, but that's a good idea. Too. I don't fashion myself as a promoter. Okay, I'm a, I'm a booker. I am a locker room runner. I'm a director of operations. But other than the time when the promoter uh, of question went to prison, <laughs> um, I have not actually technically promoted any know, events entirely is, on my own that is the gr- and, and i don't want to get into that but like that phrase is so what the fuck indie wrestling the promoter went to prison he was he was uh, uh sentenced on a monday 
And then a Monday, I, and, a, and a Monday is also when you got a call about the the Catch a Predator segment. That's too. true. Not the same Monday. I want to point out. Not the same. We're two and a half years apart. But on Monday he got sentenced and put away. That Wednesday, I think. Wednesday or Tuesday, we had to run a show inside of a prison mm-hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> as part of like a community outreach thing we were doing, which was not paid for by tax money, by the way. It was paid for by, by money prisoners earned. And then on that Thursday or Friday, the promoter got transferred to that same prison. <laughs> so if we would have just waited 48 hours, his ass could have helped set up the ring. Um. Wow. So that and then the TV taping we did the next month, I had to promote on my own entirely amidst g- genuine nervous breakdowns and panic attacks. I, I, I don't say that as a punchline. I think I was given a hand at that point. I think I was around for a bit of that. You were uh, around uh, for, yeah, you were, I think you bit. were at that show that I had to run alone where we were missing a wire to the sound system. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, if it did, wasn't my sound system. The guy that owned the sound system was in prison. I couldn't ask him where his wire well, was. was what do like, you want from me? It was like forty five minutes too, and I was just like, nobody's setting up the sound yet. And I went over and looked, and I was like, guys, yeah. you know, you know, we don't have the shit to, for the sound. But it's okay. <laughs> we did a West Side Story battle royal song. It was great. Um, Pe- Pedro just announced everybody coming in, yep. and it was it was so good. It was but so like good. Th- that, I'm proud of that because we got through it. And I think if I'm correct, we made like a sixteen dollar profit, um, <laughs> which I totally not negative. I totally shoved it in that promoter's face. Next time he complains about losing money, look what I did. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, that that I had to be a promoter. I, I don't want to do that by myself. No, I, I hate no. that. My bread and butter is behind an announce table or in front of a camera interviewing somebody or producing a documentary or something like that. I, yes. I'm not a promoter, but I will gladly eat uh, fried chicken with commentators. Okay. <laughs> I know it's not like it doesn't have the alliteration of like waffles with women. Yeah. Like, it's two different C sounds. I'm sorry, chicken with commentators doesn't really work. We did work. breakfast with champions. We got to do, like, um, let's do bacon with broadcasters. Listen, bacon with broadcasters? I don't know. Uh, the girls were really interested in bacon for coming back, which means we're doing a part. Well, do they have yeah. to have the rights to everything? What's left for me? That's true. That's true. God. You can take it up with Katie Arquette. She scares me. <laughs> Anyways, I think we were talking about DJZ. Hey, <laughs> DJZ, he scares me too, but he's in Florida, so I can talk about it. There you go. There you go. Um, no, but it, it was an incredible interview, and he was very open and very candid. Um, and I'm going to put a lot of um, rarely seen hidden extras on there too. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a match he talks about with Johnny Gargano from Youngstown that's very rarely seen. Really? They went like 20 minutes in front of almost no people. Jeez. I'm going to dig that one out. Um, his very first match as an 18 year old in IWC versus Jason Gorey. Uh, me and DJZ did an alternate commentary track for that. So be on the lookout for that. Um, I'm not just putting him over because he might be hiding in the studio somewhere still, but Jimmy DeMarco, Mm -hmm. uh, him and DJZ had an incredible, uh, not just an incredible match, but an incredible video package, um, of a training vignette called Rock Warriors, which was totally lovingly ripped off of Memphis Wrestling and the Macho Man Randy Savage video package. If you search for, if you search Rock Warriors, you'll probably find both of them on YouTube. Um, I, I have to put that on there because I love Memphis Wrestling and I love DJC. So that's everything. That's, and I love Jimmy DeMarco. It's everything that's right about pro wrestling. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to have a whole disc full of extras like that. Nice. Um, pull stuff out of the archives. We talked about the match. He almost died in against Homicide, so I have to include that. Um, this isn't the Mexico one. This is something else. Yeah. This no. This was when he was eighteen, and he dove off the top rope and went splat on the hard floor because nobody caught him. Mm. Um, there's a match with Adam Cole from Baltimore that's been rarely seen that'll be on there. So it's just it you know whatever it is, it's going to be six hours all things DJZ until Sorg emails me and says we're out of room. We got to abandon ship. That's an issue. That's an um, issue. I'll just I'm just going to keep sending him things. I'm going to. That's a- I'm gonna Google Drive the F out of Sorgatron. We had a, we had a really serious conversation about extras on the Solution DVD we're working on. So we did. Um, but but yeah, anybody who's interested in DJZ, I, I implore you to check that out in a few uh, weeks because it's the perfect timing because it, it closes the book on him as an independent wrestler, mm-hmm. and and it it opens the book on what's to come, and that gives him a chance to to reflect on everything openly and honestly. No politics, no affiliations, no no feelings. He has to worry about being hurt because yeah. he's moving on to something you know bigger and brighter. Yeah. And uh, yeah. 
I'm very proud of him as somebody who's known him since he was 16, called his first match as an 18 year old. Um, couldn't be proud of him to see what he's doing today. And it was my pleasure to help him tell his story. Fantastic. I can't wait to check that out. You know, through the DVD. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to make it nine discs just oh for Sorg. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Please, it will not be nine discs. Please, please do not demand refunds. Let, please buy tons of digital copies, guys. Uh, anyways, um, fantastic. So there's a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff going on. You, you, Lisa, we talked about the network. I mean, we're all going digital these days uh, with the with these things. You and, know what's and, you know what's funny, Sorg, hmm. is uh, we've been talking about going digital and uh, MP4 VOD platforms and how we're in the new tech age. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm going to do when I go home? Mm. I'm going to go home and. Uh, Take out a VHS tape okay. that's called 1995 Jim Cornette Fan Q&A that was absolutely bootlegged and the quality is atrocious. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to watch that with the biggest smile on my face. <laughs> and all of you kids with your HD and your 4K can suck it because I'm going to have to turn the volume up to max just to hear Cornette above all of the static and loud silence because a 1995 bargain basement camera captured him with some fat guy's head in the way who sat in front of whoever bootlegged it see now that is i think that's an opportunity i shouldn't <laughs> i shouldn't be saying this on air but Uh-oh. but taking those vhs's capturing those in full shitty vhs quality and put them on a pl- digital platform i would love to do that with the cornet interview but it is very inappropriate for reasons i will not share uh publicly but you can ask <laughs> me that after the show um, but I do have some VHS stuff that I will be digitizing from a film library that has not been seen in oh. almost 20 years. If you know me personally, you've probably heard me bring it up. But uh, Almost as if forever. Uh, I've been working on it for a long time. Yes. But uh, it's not my fault. The owner of the footage recently moved from state to state. So I will put the heat on him. And I will not, message his, I will not mention his name because... Even at 78 years old, he could still beat me up. Um, but a lot of your favorites are going to be in matches that you've never seen before. In a way, you'll get to see it. Hopefully, hopefully in the next six to eight months. We'll see. There you go. A little teaser for you guys. Uh, anything else going Sorg's going to have to do those master copies, too. So yeah. if he just decides to not do it, then uh, I'm going to give his uh, private phone number on my social media. And you can... Call him and ask him where the f are my Jimmy Yang matches. I think That's my a private. Hint. My private number is pretty much already out there. That's not hard to. Well, I saw it on the bathroom wall walking in. Okay, what? I think Demarco wrote it. Well, there's that too. Uh, anyways, uh, Joe Dabrowski. Joe, What's up, Joe Hyphen Dabrowski dot com, where you can link to all that crazy stuff. I can tell on. you're you're uh, sophisticated because I, 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 as a layman, will just say dash, but you'll actually say hyphen. Hyphen. Yeah. Hyphen. Dombrowski. And uh, that's where you can get all my stuff on, on DVD, and we got the links to ProWrestlingLibrary.com, the digital platform, over 250 hours, a ton of archives. And of course, if you don't like Pivot Share, if you don't like Pro Wrestling Library, you just don't like me, which is a fair amount of you. Um, or if you really like Sorg, you can go to IndieWrestling.us and get all the, the new up-to-date releases. But I'm digging deep in the archives, man. I'm pulling stuff out that you didn't even know existed. I'm pulling out stuff I didn't know I existed. What about the 10 year anniversary we celebrated last That's week? That's right. right? If, you, if you didn't check out, if you're listening to this, uh, technically part two of Joe Dombrowski here uh, in the studio with us. Uh, but we did uh, do the. <laughs> And this, this phrase by itself, we did the 10-year anniversary of the To Catch a Predator uh, promo with Jimmy DeMarco at, on Sports Time Ohio 10 years ago that uh, almost got them kicked off of the air. Uh, this, is, this is something that I had heard all aspects of from one mouth or another over the last 10 years. <laughs> I think it has been described in detail on this show uh, shortly after it happened. Uh, but uh, it's it's pretty it's 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 a it's a piece of um, the uh, pro wrestling, uh, I guess, uh, uh, Rust Belt pro wrestling lore. <laughs> it, it's part of the fabric of our culture. It now. is. You know what, Sorg? Me and Demarco catch predator. That's just a good old fashioned slice of Americana. The, the one we don't want to admit. It's the uh, American <laughs> dream, if you will, baby. Thank we you so much. Clubbering tonight. 
Thank you so much, Joe. I think I've been working with you uh, uh, the longest of anybody in pro wrestling on projects. For that, I will congratulate you and also offer my condolences. There you go. That seems uh, very appropriate. Go check him out. And, of course, check out everything, including his stuff on ProWrestlingLibrary.com and also some other of his stuff over at IndieWrestling.us and IndieWrestling.network. Just, just get all those, and you'll have the pure joe dombrowski experience subscribe to all of the wrestling that's right that's right and look out for all those for new opportunities for even more wrestling as always uh and uh of course uh, you know check out everything there check out matches with a lot of people that we've talked about here including uh whatever shima zion was that week jimmy demarco <laughs> and so much more i will sell gargano matches till i die we got you guys plenty them. of them we just like he was randomly in a clip when we talk with talking about jimmy Gar- dark uh, DeMarco. We brought DeMarco back, beat the crap out of Johnny Gargano, and you know what? Gargano never got his revenge. You tell no. me who the real superstar is. Yeah, exactly. We'll see. We'll see DeMarco on, on TakeOver uh, 30. Uh, <laughs> so Running out go. of the crowd, probably, hey, with that hey, hammer. They keep going back to Cleveland, so we never know. They may just go. pop up with that hammer. Did uh, we talk about the fact that they shot Gargano at Turner's Hall? Have we talked about that on the show? No, we have. You know what? Okay. You, you're right. We should. You currently run in Turner's Hall. We do. My promoter owns that building right now. That's right. And uh, WWE was shooting footage for NXT TakeOver, WrestleMania weekend. Mm -hmm. Uh, They were in Brooklyn, right? Um, Johnny Gargano versus Adam Cole. And the whole story was Adam Cole is this proper, well-to-do, lavish, well-off, you know, man made of money who can have access to any personal trainer he wants, any equipment he wants, any spa he wants to, to get prepared and get trained. And Gargano went gritty. He went back to his roots. He went back to Cleveland and was running the sidelines in the Cleveland Brown Stadium. And he was um, jogging down uh, uh, the pothole filled roads. And he also went back to his roots. He went to Turner's Hall, which is genuinely the building he was taught to wrestle in. Mm hmm. In 2005 and 2006 and 2007, he was there all the time working out, taking advantage of the open ring. And, um, yeah, man, just watching him reflect, go back down to the basement that, where one of the old rings is still sitting, um, get a chance to see the building, smell the building. It's not the prettiest. It's got a lot of history and mileage mm-hmm. on it. But uh, Jeremy Borash was there helping film. Uh, as Gargano kind of toured his way through the building. And um, very cool experience to, to have Turner's Hall featured on the WWE Network. And on the if you don't have the network or you don't feel like looking for it, there's a, an extended version, almost like a, you know like a pre-UFC fight video mm-hmm. package of, mm-hmm. of the entire training regimen of Adam Cole and Johnny Gargano. And they spend a solid, I don't know, three, four minutes of that 20-some minute piece on Gargano at Turner's Hall. And, um, again, just a surreal moment to see Johnny, who I've known since he was 18, 19 years old, now go full circle. And I'm able to be there as he returns to Turner's Hall and, yeah. and reflects. And Gargano's a guy I'm so proud of. I knew he was special from almost day one. Mm-hmm. Here's the first thing I ever noticed about him to know he was special. I would go down to the basement of Turner's Hall, Cleveland All-Pro, and I'd, you'd see wrestlers of all shapes and sizes, all ages. Skinny guys, fat guys, old guys, young guys. And it was just a normal pro wrestling locker room. And some guys were focused. Some guys were lighthearted. Some guys were just relaxing before their match. I'd look at Gargano, and Gargano was pacing. Always, always pacing. And I'd look at his, at his head, and it'd be, it'd be like hung down. And I'd look at his eyes, and I'd just see razor-sharp focus. And I could see him just running through everything he wanted to do in that match and just... Boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, and just the whole rhythm. Um, and you could tell, like, in his mind, in his heart, there was not one thing more important in this world than going out there and having the match of the night that night and, mm-hmm. and, and, and having a performance that people would talk about. Um, and especially as a young kid, having opportunities with Alex Shelley and Nigel McGuinness and Christopher Daniels and guys like that. Um, that's how I could tell how badly he wanted this. Once we started doing the PWO and the Prime stuff, and he was able to grow into himself a little bit, and I realized 
this is the most well-rounded guy we have. This is a guy who can put in a main event against literally anybody and he'll deliver. This is a guy who can have represent this company and go on the mic and thank everybody for coming and send them home and know he's going to do justice to this position. And it was only a matter of time before he was top guy in my company to top guy in a major independent, which he was for Evolve, mm -hmm. to now a top guy for um, a brand of WWE being NXT. And you know what? There's only a matter of time before he's on the top of Raw or SmackDown, mm -hmm. too. I think that the time that I, I noticed that and when I saw you know Gargano after uh, one of the resolutions where he won the belt and you know, being there with the fans and like you know giving a kid in a wheelchair the belt and getting pictures with him and everything you know it was just like okay yeah no he's made for this right yeah. uh, but then like even running into him I think he was deep into he might have been champion at the time when we uh, WrestleMania 29 weekend I remember him walking around in the suit that was when he was kind of doing the, I think it's the first time he did like the super serious. Yeah. Uh, side of Gargano and uh, it was just like it was just like a whole different vibe with him and uh, again another just like that's he's getting somewhere you know and it's just a matter of time yeah. and he's one of those guys that lives it that breathes it mm -hmm. has that passion and there was a point I don't you know I don't know what his regimen is now there was a point he was going to the gym twice a day every single day he wow. was wrestling um and, and there were there were some points where he would have to deal with some some personal setbacks or some personal tragedies, and that would motivate him further mm -hmm. to just put all of his energy into wrestling. And I, I, I tell young kids today who are depressed or in re having relationship issues or have you know personal trauma if a family member sick, whatever the case is mm -hmm. that's that's weighing on them, if you can somehow take that energy and channel it. Mm -hmm. And and in, instead of your vice being alcohol or anything self, if, if your vice can be just working your ass off at the gym, mm -hmm. um, or if you're hurt and you're down because you can't wrestle, study those promo tapes. And those that aren't wrestlers, like I am personally, a lot of my, I'm motivated kind of in a similar way, right? Where you, you, you know, creatively or that thing that you want to do and create and excel at. You know, not just wrestling. It could be commentary. It could be right. something else around wrestling. It could be, you know, uh, uh, competitive video games. It could be, you know, art. It could be whatever. Like, what anybody out there that kind of runs this, that they find that passion and invest in that. I think that helps anybody. And if you're not going to do it to your fullest ability, mm -hmm. then you're cheating yourself. Absolutely. And it, it goes back to, you know, the guys that just want to wrestle once a month or the mm -hmm. guys that tell me they take this seriously but but don't put the effort in on professional gear yeah. or on emailing promoters or on the gym or on, you know, handling themselves professionally, you know, like I'm happy when I get to new opportunity, but once it's over, it's okay. What's next? Can I come back and make it a regular thing? And, and if not, where am I going to move on to? Um, there are so many guys I see that get into it and they'll give it a really hard six months or a really hard couple of years. Mm -hmm. But eventually, they just get comfortable and complacent. Mm -hmm. And then they're just working the same place every two weeks, every four weeks. And the audience knows them, so they're already over. They don't need mm -hmm. to work hard. Mm -hmm. So they get into a holding pattern. And it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. If, if somebody tells me, oh, I can never make any money doing this wrestling stuff, why the F not? It's a business. It is a business. It's a very hard business. Mm -hmm. Okay, and yes, the odds of you making it into the NFL are very hard. Yes. The odds of your band getting signed to a record deal are very hard. And the odds of you getting a WWE contract are very hard. But it's easier to try than to prove that it can't be done. And, and you can't prove to me you can't do it. There are plenty of... And also, we're not in a world where I, I think wrestling can be compared entirely with the NFL. Unless that is completely your goal, is to be the guy on that particular stage... But there, I think there are plenty making livings at this too. Hundred percent, right? So 100%. It, it's you know it, it is a business where if you work your ass off and get in front of people, you can create a fan base, right? Yes. So I mean that that's I, that makes it more accessible, I think, than an NFL. In, in the course of my career, which is sixteen and a half years, mm -hmm. to the best I can do the math, I am reasonably sure I have made six figures doing pro wrestling mm -hmm. never in a year obviously yeah but all total six the very very low six figures yeah but six figures i um, mean look at your wide network of content <laughs> for instance yeah and it, it, it's 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 because i don't put all my eggs in one basket it's because 
I will I will go to your show and do commentary or ring announcing, or I yeah. will go to your show and do producing, or I will voice over during the week at home, or I will merchandise at my table, yeah. or I will do my content online. You're, or, you're, you 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 have been the expert. Everybody and, and you know I you hear it and you know everybody comes like, well, goes Joe with this crazy. I call it crazy, crazy Joe's uh, table of uh, stuff. Uh, I take that as a compliment. <laughs> I know, and and you should, but um, but you are. You you see every angle and you're taking advantage of every angle in this wrestling business. If you want it bad enough, you'll find a way. If mm-hmm. you want to make excuses, you'll find a way there too. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's the old phrase? There's three kinds of people in this world: those that try, those that give it all they got, and those that do whatever it takes. Mm-hmm. That's Dr. Tom Pritchard line. And I look at myself as a do whatever it takes guy. And it took me a long time to learn and figure yeah. It out. Yeah. No. But um, if you want to make this work, you'll find a way to make this work. Yep. Um. And and that's the bottom line. And, and making it work to everybody is different. Yes. You know, everybody's goals are different. Some people want to go to Japan. Some people want to go to WWE. Um. There are plenty of people, even locally, or that have you know done that and said, "I've done everything I wanted to do with wrestling." Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, and and you know, I, I know several people who say, "I don't even think about WWE. I just want to go to Japan." You know, and maybe they end up there. You know, and I hope they do. Yeah. You so. know. I mean, and that 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 is it, you know. Whether fans think, well, they didn't make it to WWE, they lasted six months at WWE. Cole Cabana is a failure because he couldn't make it in WWE. No, Cole Cabana is one of the most successful wrestlers. Cole Cabana is DIY as Jeez. they come. He's oh, yeah. changed the game. He's inspired so Punk many people. Fucking rock, and I think that's yeah. the cool thing about independent wrestling. Young today. Bucks. I mean, would the Young Bucks have done what they were able to do if it wasn't for people like Cole Cabana? And, I don't know. And look know? at other opportunities that come up because of that. There is more. Steady work. There are more people making a living off of wrestling now than probably in since WCW closed. Mm-hmm. Um, and 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 it's going to be more so once AEW gets up and running. Oh yeah. Um, but you've got guys working for Ring of Honor, MLW, uh, New Japan, uh, AAA, all these different places that are giving people these opportunities. And if it's a place like MLW or NWA, which maybe doesn't have a full touring schedule, uh, then you can supplement that on independence, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. because you have a bigger platform. Yeah. Um, there, there's so many opportunities out there. It's, when I started, it was WWE or bust. Mm-hmm. TNA just started. Yeah. Ring of Honor just started. They were destination places. And there was, but you couldn't make a living there. Not no, they, they were several years from being on TV. Yeah, so. absolutely. Um, when I started, you know, again, keep in mind, even though the internet was here, it was a much different world. Mm-hmm. When I started, I figured, well, Japan really isn't a goal for me. Mexico really isn't a goal for me because what are they going to do? Fly me to Japan to do English commentary? That doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. But last weekend, I'm in Mexico <laughs> as part of the English announced team. Right, right. You and know, think- because the world has grown so much where now New Japan and AAA do have yeah. an American audience. When I came in, they didn't. Yeah. Ex- and le- except for the tape traders. Kevin Kelly is a is a regular on New Japan. Kevin now, Kelly so- might be my daddy, but he will <laughs> never come home from Japan long enough to do a paternity <laughs> test. Steve Carino told me he was my dad, and I have not disproven it. There you go. Oh, fantastic. So much going on. Joe, thank you for carving uh, time out of your uh, busy travel schedule. Maybe, thank you. Maybe... You're going you're gonna to let me out now. You're going to unlock the door. Uh, sure, right? sure. Yeah. <laughs> she did lock the door on the way out, didn't she? Well, I've been here for a week now. <laughs> that is true. We will let you go there so you can finally finish that DJZ thing and get me those files so I can work on that DVD. Um, but, ASAP. Uh, ASAP. JoeDashNabrowski.com. There you or go. Or hyphen if you're dignified. ProWrestlingLibrary.com. For every level. Thank you so much. And, of course, a lot of the names, like I said, you can find on IndieWrestling.us, uh, his uh, WrestlingLibrary.com, and wrestling, uh, IndieWrestling.network, uh, too. Uh, and Watch people eat waffles. Oh, yeah, watch. And uh, Do they knows? chew with their mouth closed? Uh, well, I had to do a lot of editing around that. Uh, How did you find was... out Honey Badgers ate waffles? When I said, hey, how about waffles? And I got a lot of emoticons. That's how. Uh, so and uh and congratulations to honey badger's shoulder on becoming that's famous. right she, she hey i was texting her and she's like oh i got caught out of the shot i'm like no we saw your sh- well, it's like we saw the back of your head 
and you got a speaking part on Raw. She's not aware of this, but I'm actually retooling the poster for the next premiere event to where the promo shot is just her shoulder and back from behind. As seen on WWE Raw. Yeah, that way I can put the logo <laughs> on the flyer to advertise. Oh, geez. Uh, and, and and we'll be working in uh, the picture of uh, the Rev Ron Hunt beside Dolph Ziggler uh, in that security spot from SmackDown for his posters, too. Touche. As seen on Raw. Well, it's great. It's great. Guys are everywhere. It's amazing. We'll see you guys next time. Until then, support indie wrestling and apparently AAA at this point, too. We'll see you guys again. Just support wrestling. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.